Hello everybody, welcome back to my workshop and in today's video we are going to have a look at a fantastic update to the Dave McQueenie battery tracker app. We released the original a few weeks ago and it was very popular um, but quite a few people made excellent suggestions for um, improving it and we've taken on board a couple of them specifically. Uh, one of them was to have two warning trigger points rather than just one which we've taken on and the other was that instead of counting the number of times you've used the battery separately in each model so for instance two in this model seven in this model and five in that model it just counts them globally so it will now say this battery has been used 14 times whatever no matter which model you're in uh, if you haven't seen it before, what do I mean by battery tracker app? Well, I shall plug in the battery and watch what happens. When you switch on the power or the, the uh, plug in the battery, it powers up anyway. Pardon all the squeaks in the background from the uh, speed controller. A pop-up appears on the screen and you can't get out of it until you either select the battery you've plugged in or you press the ESC. If you're doing workshop or pro or whatever and you don't want to increase the cycle count on the battery, press either the ESC button here or the programming ESC button down by the dial and it will ask you, are you wanting to exit without selecting a battery? You would say yes, I'll say no because obviously I want to show what's going on here. And so that would allow you to carry on without uh, increasing the cycle count on the battery. I have plugged in battery number one, because I've put a label one on it. As you can see, it's telling me um, what capacity that battery has, what the warning trigger points are, of capacity remaining are. Uh, so I will choose that one and off we go. Lovely. And you can see a little thing from the Lua app showing how much of the battery capacity has been used. The great point to this app is that um, you can use batteries of quite different capacities or if you've got older batteries and you want the warning to come on earlier for that battery, it's all preset for you. Uh, if you use the Jetty Alarm for uh, a battery capacity used, then you've basically just got the one alarm um, and so for different capacities or different ages of batteries where you prepare to use more or less capacity, that doesn't really suit. This allows you to set up every battery individually. You set it up once uh, in the table of batteries and then in the model you just choose it. So how do you get the app and how do you set it up? Uh, as always with Dave's apps, it's available through Jetty Studio. Um, if you've taken one of Dave's apps beforehand, then the link is already in Studio, and uh, so this app will show up. If this is the first time you've ever considered getting one of Dave's apps, then you need to put the link in Studio for it to find them. In the description box below this video, I've got the link for you. You copy it. You don't click on it. You copy it and go to Jetty Studio. If you've got a PC, then the route is to go to File, Configuration. A box will appear along the top of that box are some tabs. One of them is Apps Sources. Click on that and then in the box below, you can paste the link in there. If there are already other links in there, then you must select a fresh line. You can't put them all on the same line. Say OK to that and you will be able to get all of Dave's apps through Jetty Studio. Uh, now, there are some problems with this. Uh, I've just told you the route to get there if you're using a PC. Um, it seems that uh, Jetty Studio on an Apple has different menu names, and it, this causes confusion for people with Apples. I'm sorry, I, I do not know the route to get to the App Sources tabs if you're using an Apple. Another problem that comes up is that people will insist on clicking on the link that's in the description box below instead of just highlighting it, copying it, and then pasting it into Studio. Don't click on it. 
it will not take you to the app. Uh, another problem is that in Studio, uh, the list of apps that comes up when you select the Lua App Manager is blank. Um, and the, the reason for this is that Jetty seems not to have updated Studio to recognize a lot of the transmitters now, and so it completely misunderstands what is a compatible app and says none of them are, and the list is blank. So if you look on the left-hand side of uh, the Lua App Manager, there are three little checkboxes. One of them is show only compatible apps. Untick that, and then all the apps will be shown, and there you are. So in this case, the app you're looking to install is dfm-bat. If you'd previously installed the uh, original version, it may ask you to uninstall and then install the new one. Then we can go to Applications, User Applications, press plus and install DFM bat. Now, you might be offered two different DFM bats uh, if you'd installed the previous version. And the reason for this is we're trying to do it as an update, but it's actually uh, an all new program. And you've still got the original DFM bat dot lua dot lua. This is a bat dot lc. So if you're happy that you know what you're doing with your computer, you can uh, hook up your transmitter, go into the file manager and delete bat.lua. Don't delete bat.lc. Um, and then the transmitter won't be trying to offer you two versions of the same program. But if you do leave it on there, it'll be pretty obvious once you go into the settings, whether you've got version 1 or version 2. And version 2 is the one you want. So we select it, and then we go into it. And uh, the first thing you want to do is set up some battery groups. I've got some already set up here. Um, the names you give them are just names. It won't affect any of the settings. So you can see I've got 6S5000s, 6S3300s, some EDFs, and a 6S3500 for the Alpinas. Yes, I'm a greedy boy. I've got uh, two multiplex Alpinas, a 4 meter and a 5 meter. And the batteries don't all have to be the same capacity. That's the whole point of this app. So what I'm going to do is add a new battery group. So I press plus. I'll come down to it. Group 5. I'm going to change its name. I'll delete that out. And these are going to be my 3S batteries. I'll make that capital. Put in a space. And they're roughly 2300 And just to show you what we can do, I will say a very British word. I'll put a space in there, which means around about, and it's ish. OK, now I want to edit what's in that battery group. So I press the edit button here. No batteries in that group press plus a couple of times because I've got two batteries to add and I have batteries labeled one and two and they are slightly different capacities so battery one oh I keep pressing the wrong uh, I keep pressing the wrong button it's this edit button here battery one its capacity is it's a 2400 so I'll go in there go to that spin it up to 2400 and Warning one, I'll want that to come on when there's 40% um, capacity left. So I'll go there, press the menu button again so I can just jump through at tens. Warning two, press the menu button again so I can jump through at tens. And I like to land when there's 30% capacity left. There is no need to absolutely push my batteries. You choose what you want. Now, the number of cycles, 
will increase by one every time you select the battery for use. But if you happen to know already how many cycles it's had, you can go in here and set it up. Uh, uh, I've had these batteries a while, so I have no idea what their cycle number is. I'll just let that run. Battery number two. Here we go. That is a 2200. So I'll come down here. Set that to 2200. And I'll use the same warning. Oop. And that's that battery group set up. I have only two batteries in here. You can use a, a battery group with one battery. You can have half a dozen batteries. It's fine. And you can set up these battery groups in any model that has the app. You don't have to just set up uh, the ones for this model that it's using. So you can create and edit from any model. So we say OK to that. So now I've created a battery group. I can tell this model which group to use. I go in here and it's none of those ones. It's these ones because I'm using my Calaris as the demonstrator for this. So we say OK to that. So the app in this model now knows it's using that setup. The warnings, uh, the warn one sound. Well, I'm going to use a pre-warning in warn one and then the it's time to land in warn two. You don't have to do it that way. You might not want a pre-warning at all. Don't set anything up. Or you might want warning one to be land now and warning two to be, oh my God, the battery's about to collapse, get on the ground. That's entirely up to you. So I have a couple of sounds custom created at rc-thoughts.com. The first one is capacity, prepare to land. And I don't want any vibration from the stick or the transmitter vibrator, if you have a transmitter that has those. The warn two sound for me is capacity is used up, land now. And I will have a short vibration of the left stick because that's my throttle stick so that's my warning set up for this model there is one more you must do so work your way through every menu otherwise the app is not going to work and that is to choose your battery milliamp hour sensor capacity um, if you haven't chosen it that line will be blank and you will not get any warnings so say okay to that and you're all set up. There is another option. Oops, come out of here. Is display telemetry. Add from Lua. You can add the battery tracker, which will be like a, a horizontal bar graph showing uh, your capacity being used as you're moving along. Okay, to that, let's have a look. It'll show blank at the moment. There it is, no battery selected. But once a battery is selected, the thing starts moving. Now, some safety considerations. Uh, I have been quite astonished by the number of people who plough ahead and, um, you know, install a bit of an app, don't watch the whole video or don't pay attention, and they haven't completed it, and they go out and fly with it and create themselves problems. Um you'd really do need to bench test things folks watch the whole video we haven't finished yet watch the whole video do it methodically and bench test it don't just go out and rely on something to work and then find it's flattened your batteries or the controls are going the wrong way and things like this please do test it and another safety consideration is that um, there is no guarantee that the Lua app will still be running when it comes to the point where your battery needs the alarms. Um, because Jetty reserves a bit of memory and processor for its apps to run in, um, but it can shut them down if the apps are causing the main processor uh, a problem. This is so that you would never have an app interfere with your control of the model. So it's incredibly unlikely to happen, but in the once in a million chance that it does, you don't want to be 
uh, destroying your battery and running out of power um, because your transmitter has stopped the apps from running. And therefore, you might consider it prudent to use the standard alarm settings. Oh, where am I going? Here. Um, just to put in an absolute final backstop uh, capacity alarm, just in case for some reason ever um, you had misprogrammed the app or your transmitter has for some reason decided to stop the apps in the middle of that flight and you don't know about it. Okay, folks, it's a great app. Do have fun with it.